Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be attempting to fit a smoke system to my mini quad here. This is the Martian 2 build that I did on the channel and then I updated it to have the Racer Cube all-in-one system on it. So, not so long ago on the channel I posted a video of my ZMR 250 with the Xiaomi 360 cam on the top with green smoke bellowing out the back of it and that video was just a test and it received very mixed reactions starting from wow that's amazing how did you do that to what's the point what next sort of thing so my justification of it is I love everything that flies and I love going to air shows and when I was a kid I'd see aerobatic extras and the red arrows and they've all got smoke piling out the back of it and it looks fantastic I do so that is my justification of it's a visual thing and this is a hobby so why not try and do something different so that is why I attempted it so let's just move this guy out of the way this is the ZMR 250 360 cam and the way that I did this I took a smoke grenade this is off amazon they are called the enola gay smoke grenade and i literally just strapped it to the bottom of the mini quad with some big straps that i got left over from my 450 build years ago and the way these work is off a ring pull system so you have a ring and a piece of wire drilled into the side there and on the other side there is a little plastic container with a spring in it and some gunpowder and then the fuse of the grenade pokes through there and when you pull on the ring it fires it into the fuse and ignites it and lights it up. So there was a lot of trial and error testing this out which is why the video is only like 1 minute 30. You only get about 1 minute 30's worth of smoke with these despite them being huge. So this one weighs 139 grams so bolted underneath the quadcopter like that with a battery camera. We were over 800 grams which is a lot but it still flew fine. It's a great fly at this one. But there was a problem though. What I would do is plug my battery into here and get the camera going, made sure that it armed and then I would pull the ring on the bottom of here. And it took quite a bit of force to get that to ignite and I've got a KISS flight controller in here. It's one of the first versions and that ring pull would actually cause the KISS flight controller to think that it's had a crash and then the quadcopter wouldn't arm. So I thought, yeah, there's got to be a better way of doing this and potentially a way to have lighter grenades but with a longer burn time as well. So I'll get onto that in a bit. But my initial thing to do was to take this apart. Now, I would never recommend doing that, but we have this piece of card on here. Just got a knife underneath it there, removed the ignition mechanism and then we have a fuse here now so potentially what I could do is strap this underneath plug everything in then just get a lighter on here and I should have a few seconds before the smoke starts to bellow out because that is another problem as you can see with the props these smoke grenades they use a oil based color and that gets absolutely everywhere I don't know if you can see there but all of this is colored green underneath and it was laying on the ground and then the ground got covered in green as well and then when I started looking at this fuse I thought I wonder if there's a way that I can get it to ignite in the air so that is what brings me on to today's video a bit of a long introduction there but there you go so I ran into a kit actually it's called the AX18 smoke system and it consists of a RC electronic switch so this will plug into your receiver and then this here is to expect a 1.5 volt power source so a double A battery and then whatever is connected to the other side will get powered up when it receives a PWM signal from a switch so 
the idea is to either plug this into a battery or a quadcopter and that's what I'm going to attempt to do and then on the other side in the kit they give you a fuse this is a fuse that should explode when it receives 1.5 volts or more so my thinking is and this is all just trial and error at the moment if I take a JST connector here and solder it onto the power distribution board then that should give me the VBAT that comes through here so if I plug that in there like so and then this can plug into my receiver and more on this as well in a bit then when I send a signal to the receiver I've got this ISDT BC8S connected up here. This is just going to show that when I flick the switch it's going to have power coming through here. But the idea is that we don't have this here. We have a JST connector or something like that on the end of this fuse here and this should explode. And if we just look at the diagram that they give in the kit, this is the smoke grenade here, this is the fuse. You get this little cap given, you cut a hole in it. We have another fuse here, but this is like a fuse, a bit like a sparkler, so like the fuse on the end of here. It's confusing because both of these are called fuses. And then when this explodes, it should light up this fuse and then light up the smoke grenade here and these smoke grenades are much smaller and they burn for longer the trade-off with that though is that the smoke is much less than this so my eventual idea is to get this ignition system potentially working with this then I should get a externally ignited smoke system that produces a huge amount of smoke. Yeah, only for like one minute 30. These apparently should go for four minutes, but like I said, I don't know whether we're gonna see the smoke. These also come in various different colors as well, and you get given a few of them in the kit. So why didn't I fit all of this to my KISS model? And the answer's straightforward, really. I'm using a X4RSB here, and the X4RSB uses TAER on its four channels. Actually, because it's the SB version, then the bottom channel is for S bus. Let me show you. So, bottom channel for S bus, and then channels one, two, and three are just copied of the first three channels of S bus, which is TAE. So that means that if I wanted to use one of these auxiliary channels on here, then the throttle would set off my switch. And I don't want that. I want a, a auxiliary to set it off. So what you can do in beta flight is you can change the channel order. So I can, instead of having T-A-E-R, I can have AUX 1, 2, 3, 4, then T-A-E-R, which means that my X4R gets remapped. So now these auxiliaries on here are no longer the throttle. They are AUX 1, 2, and 3. So I can't remap the channel order on KISS. It's just not an option there. They want it to be simple, but yeah, sometimes simple means you can't do things that are more complicated, obviously. And so, unless I used a six to eight channel receiver on here, then that's no good and I don't have one. So, I'm switching it to beta flight, and like I say, I have switched the channel order to 1234TAER, which gives me a auxiliary channel on one of these spare channels on my X4RSB. So to show you this system working, all I have to do is plug a battery in, and then I have set this channel up here on this momentary switch on the Tyrannis, so if I press that. This should light up to show that it's getting the power through and should switch off. So if there was a fuse connected to the end of that it should explode and ignite this guy. So this is one that I have made up 
hole cut through there, we've got the fuse connected to the fuse wire that should ignite and light this thing up. One thing with these though is that the outer casing is plastic so this melts so what I'm going to do is take some card and wrap it around there tight so hopefully all this will just fall apart inside the card and not burn anything up on the copter. Before I get any of this working though, I need to make sure that the copter flies because I don't know if you remember when I reviewed the racer cube, I used the onboard D8 receiver and I was only getting like 30 meters of range before it was fail safing and I need to make sure that when it was tumbling that that wasn't something else that was an issue and it was just a fail safe. But yeah, I have moved the dip switches over on the racer cube and that combination outputs normal S bus and then I have got the X4 RSB connected to it. So I need to put all of this back together and make sure that it flies okay before going any further. So this FPV flight was taken a couple of days after the initial video that you just watched and that is because I had a real struggle with the racer cube. The moment that I plugged in the external receiver I got a huge amount of noise over the picture and I then spent a couple of days trying various regulators on the video trying to cut out the racer cube altogether and the only thing that worked was taking the power away from the receiver and powering that separately from a 5 volt regulator so that's what I did. There's still some noise on there but it's not as bad as it was and it's flyable now but yeah thumbs down for the racer cube there because the range wasn't very good on the built-in receiver and the minute you plug in an external receiver I guess it just sucks more voltage out of the system and then puts a load of noise over the video. <laughs> well, it exploded straight away. <laughs> and this is the amount of smoke that it gives off. So not a huge amount. You can barely see it. Even against the blue sky. So the trigger system kind of worked <laughs> in that it exploded as soon as I plugged it in. So I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, smoke definitely not as strong as the other grenade, but it smokes for longer. And it's lighter as well, so I got more power. But yeah, pretty unimpressive, I have to say. I can probably barely see it coming through. Still going though. Interesting, the smoke's pointing downwards. <laughs> well, I think that's the lot. <laughs> the explosion blew a hole in my helipad and uh, yeah that didn't really work did it? I wonder why it went off soon as I plugged it in I don't know I'll have to look at that at a later date well there you go that is my <laughs> failed smoke system on a mini quad I'm definitely going to be revisiting this though because uh, it's too much fun not to as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers